social justice fallacies. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was a major factor in ending the denial of basic constitutional rights to blacks in the South. But there is no point trying to make that the main source of the black rise out of poverty, nor can the left act as if the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was solely their work. A higher percentage of Republicans than Democrats voted for the act, close quote. So this is, this, you're saying something here which is... Really, it is, it's, sh it's shocking, it's heretical. Yeah. You're saying, well, you're saying the Civil Rights Act ensured equality before the law. That was overdue, it was necessary, it was just. That's an accomplishment in American history. Yes. But at about the same time, we get the creation of a vast expansion of the welfare state, and it does people harm. Yes. It harms the African American family. It leads to fatherless. And have, have I got your yeah, argument right? Yeah, yeah. And you want to stand by that? Yeah. The other, and the other thing, too, it, the Civil Rights Act was not what got blacks into professional occupations. Uh, in the decade prior to, the, to 1964, the number of blacks in professional occupations doubled. So this is, not, this is not the result of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. One of many things that no individual, no institution, and no society has any control over is the past. Yes. Why does that matter? Because when we talk, we talk about uh, groups and we, we talk about their uh, environment, we usually mean their tangible current surroundings. But of course, all the groups have had different pasts. Uh, when, the, when the Irish, the Jews, and the Italian uh, immigrants were, were, were coming to America, uh, it was common for, Irish, for, for Italian and Jewish neighborhoods on New York's Lower East Side to be represented by Irish politicians. That, and, and why is that? Because if you look at what happened before they ever got to America, you can see that the Irish had reasons to organize in a political kind of way. The Jews and the Italians did not. Their circumstances, it wouldn't have made any difference. And now when they get to New York, they, were, they may be living in the same neighborhoods and so forth, and the tangible surroundings are the same, but the whole past of the three groups is very different. And even when it's, the Italians and the Jews rise to prosperity, it's in different industries. It's in different occupations. And the past means that we should never expect groups to end up evenly distributed oh, across. The past, but, but even such a thing as age, people don't realize some American ethnic groups are a decade older than others, and some are more than two decades older than others. So the Japanese, the difference between blacks and white is not the largest the difference in the country. The Japanese Americans have, uh, are uh, well, higher than the Mexican Americans by an even larger amount. Japanese Americans have a median age of 52. Uh, Mexican Americans have it somewhere in the 20s. 52-year-old people make more money than 20-year-old people. Tom, would you close our discussion by reading a passage from Social Justice Fallacies. Oh, well, if I still, this, still agree with it. Do we want the mixture of students who are going to be trained to do advanced medical research to be representative of the demographic makeup of the population as a whole? Or do we want students with the highest probability of finding cures for cancer and Alzheimer's? Do you want airline pilots chosen for demographic representation of various groups? Or would you prefer to fly with pilots who are chosen for their mastery of all the complex things that increase your chances of arriving safely at your destination? Consequences matter, or should matter, more than some attractive or fashionable theory. More fundamentally, do we want a society in which some babies are born into the world as heirs of prepackaged grievances against other babies born the same day, blighting both their lives? Or do we want to at least leave them the option to work things out better in their lives than we have in ours? Thomas Sowell, author of some 40 books, including 
social justice fallacies. Thank you. Thank you. Although we want to at least leave them the option to work things better in their lives than we did in our lives. I think that's going to be the quote for this video. And it's really fascinating that we don't realize enough that the majority of our grievances towards one another today is actually inherited from the people who came before us. So if you can pause for a moment, you realize that this person, your mother, never actually did anything to you. Maybe the ancestor did something to your ancestor and that has been passed down to you. And here you are with all the burdens that this life has to give you. You still have to suffer in handling an ancestral score settling. Definitely not worth it. You let me know what you think about this in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell if you're new to the channel. Thank you for watching and as always, until the next one, stay free.